How do you feel about inventing a hypothetical scenario for this intro? Like? I've got a vegetarian coming around and I want to impress them. I've got just the thing for you. In all seriousness though, this is an incredible pie with an amazing filling. The filling we're going to begin with, lots of component parts that each need making and then combining together. I've delegated lentils to you and I'll take care of the rice. Lentils need to bubble away in veg stock for about 20 minutes, then drain them and cool. For the rice, throw it into a pan of salted boiling water, leave that for nine minutes so it's just al dente, then drain it and let it cool. And while both of those are simmering, we're going to peel and dice two onions and two cloves of garlic. And sweat them off in a pan until they're soft. I haven't done the rice yet. You can do your onion bit now. Thank you. Peel and dice two onions, two cloves of garlic and sweat them off with two tablespoons of olive oil in a pan until they're soft and sweet. Then add in the spices, ground cumin and ground coriander. If that passed you by, like it did me, full details on sorted food. Next, I'm going to wilt this spinach. So I've got some boiling water. I'm just going to tip all over it. Then once it's wilted, drain it, let it cool, and then squeeze out all of that excess liquid. I love spinach. I love spinach. You do really need a bag of it, and it needs to be fresh. Got a lot of respect for Popeye for being able to eat tin spinach, because tin spinach is the devil. If Popeye can squeeze open a can, he's already strong anyway. He doesn't need the spinach. Rice is cooked. To finish our filling, we're going to blitz up all of our squeezed, wilted spinach, the feta cheese, the pine nuts, the fresh parsley, and the juice and zest of one lemon. Get a spin. I guess we chuck it all in this bowl now. Combine it all. What we need is our lentils, our rice, our cooked and sweated off onions with the cumin and coriander, and all of our cheese and spinach mixture. Get your hands in, get it mixed. Check it for seasoning. A little bit more lemon juice or salt if it needs it. Oh, that is fantastic. Could take a little bit more lemon juice. I was going to say that. I was just about to say that, wasn't I, Raph? You can back me up on this. I was going to say that, wasn't I? Could do with a little bit more lemon juice, Ben. Which is why I always keep a little bottle in the fridge, because you never know when a little bit more helps. Let me run that by my palate. Thank you. Much better. Nice. Wipe down, dry down, and melt some butter so we can start constructing our pie. Now you might have noticed already that we're using pre-bought phyllo. That is our number one tip. What we're going to do is create a four layer, metre long strip with butter in between each layer. The next one, we overlap slightly. This is a showstopper main core, so it does take a while to get all these layers layered up, buttered up, but it's worth it. Yeah, but I told you at the beginning, I've got a vegetarian coming around and I need to impress them. Well, this is the way forward. With our sheets buttered, we're going to take the filling and put it in one long sausage along one edge. Don't make it too fat because it will make it too difficult to coil. Big sausage doesn't always win the race. It's pretty long. We're restricted by the size of our oven. We wouldn't have to coil this round if we had a long one. <laughs> if you had an oven that long, you could just roll it and cook it as one. But I feel like the spiral effect is a bit that goes, ooh, that's fancy. I can't wait for that reaction. <laughs> So basically... To keep it packed in like a burrito. Not too tight, because okay. when we coil it, it will split the pastry. Oh, this is so good. It's just a giant bamboo stick. <laughs> and then, as you say, that won't fit in the oven. So what we have to do is coil it around itself like a big snail. The inner bit will probably break, because it's a tighter coil. Okay. But the bigger it gets, the better it looks. Quick, hide that tear from the camera. What's great about this rustic dish... Is it doesn't matter if it <laughs> rips. No, this is good. Can we do a patch up? Yep. <laughs> As a split, but that's allowed, because here's how you fix that. Yeah, I mean, ideally, if you were making this every day of your life, you probably wouldn't split it, but... Hey, we're realists. We are creating the food that normal people will cook, and this will happen to normal people, because we're normal and it happened to us. So all we need to do is grab another little bit with a few layers thick, and just use that to patch it up. Optional and completely unnecessary if you get it right first time. Our audience doesn't hold us in high standards anyway. Transfer the whole thing to a baking paper lined tray, brush the whole thing with butter and bake in an oven at 200 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. Then let it cool for at least 10 or 15 before you present it. Boom. Boom. Indeed. As a newly turned vegetarian, Mike, I, I, I have to say, why are you laughing? Nothing. Oh, this would impress me. What do you mean, would? I think it's brilliant. Mm. Mike, where can I get the recipe? Any time now. 